Yeah, he's going to show us some coming. of the technology that the Roanoke Fire EMS uses to automate the dispatch of their vehicles yep. and track vehicles. And, well, I'm, take, I'm taking yeah. your thunder. Why don't you show us what you got? Exactly. So station one right there is this truck seating in the station. That's where we are right that now. That is nice. where we are now. Okay. If we pulled out and started going down the road, that little orange triangle would go up the road and show you exactly where you're at the whole way. Okay. All you right. can zoom in, which is really neat, because in this computer, if we zoom in to a certain level, Oh, wow, look at that. We get, aerial the, the imagery. We get aer aerial imagery of the station. And that is and exact. Your look at that. It has a straight so, inside. So this exact. will wow. allow you, when you pull up on scenes, to see what's around the house. All right, well, show us. I see a lot of screens. I see a lot of numbers. Why don't you show us a little bit on, on what we see on these uh, monitors here okay. real quick. Well, this whole system is called <clears throat> the AWIPS, which stands for Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System. All right. And it's our way of being able to look at all the data we need to look at and make the forecast in one workstation. Okay. <clears throat> so on the left-hand side here, this is a satellite picture. We get several different kinds of satellite images. This one is infrared, so what it's detecting is the temperature mm -hmm. of either the ground, if it's <clears throat> clear, or the clouds. As you can see up here, there's clouds here. So. Down here in southern Georgia, you can see there's an area that's one temperature for the ground. It's about four, five, six degrees Celsius. The cloud comes This is, your, your phone has a lot of radios in it. It does? Okay, it's got a radio to connect it to the cellular network. Okay. It also has a Wi-Fi radio so that you can connect to, like for example, your house's Wi-Fi network to use the internet. Now what that does, when you're in the house, you connect it to your Wi-Fi here at the house. It saves your, your data usage on your mobile plan. Right, that's what she said. Yep. So we're going to make sure we do, uh, do that after we get done. But I want to make sure you know that this, what this phone can do is it can actually bridge those two radios. All right. So it can, it can connect to the cellular network for the internet mm -hmm. and then use the Wi-Fi to connect to your iPad so that it shares out that connection. So that way you have the phone and the iPad both on the internet at the same time and you don't have to worry about when you're on the road not having the internet for your iPad because you right. just connect it. So we'll do that first. So okay. it comes with the default password here that it just created, Fueler6960. We'll change that after the show, but we'll use that for now. I'm going to go ahead and turn on your personal hotspot. Well, <laughs> wow. All right, Deet. Yeah. I want you to meet Sergeant Jason Holt. Sorry, how are you? Deet Reed. Jason Holt. Deep Reed. Good to see you, sir. Good to see he you. He has a gun and everything. Oh, yeah. He's, he's all ready to roll. Call him sir. Now, now, he's not out on the street, though. He runs the I-Star Center here at the police station. I wondered what that was, a sign out there, I-Star? Uh -huh. yeah. It stands for... Uh, Intelligence, Statistics, Technology, Analysis, and Research. There you go. It's a big quiz at the end of this, remember? Yeah. Uh, intelligence, that stopped me right there. Okay. See, I don't have any of that. So. <laughs> right. okay. Now, is this something we see in a lot of police stations nowadays, or is this something specific to the... The Star City here. Is this? Well, this is um, one of the first ones here in the valley that we know of. Okay. Um, you know, pushing to more towards that real-time crime center. We have uh, a large screen format that you can see we can display multiple images of oh, yeah. different types of sources of information right. that we have. So These are different building. parts of the, of the, this is just in the city, right? It's just uh, the city of Roanoke and surrounding area. Well, this, yes, this is, of course, for the city police department. Right. And we're looking at, um, you know, crimes happening within the city. Of course, we're going to be cognizant of crimes happening within the valley, within the region, you know, anything that may be moving. We're always going to be Makes cognizant sense. of that as well. Because you got some good relationships with the surrounding Absolutely. law enforcement. Absolutely. Yes, the, uh, okay. So a typical um, electric car has a range of 60 miles to 80 miles. Right. But they're really, really expensive, and they don't have gasoline. So the reason why they don't sell well is because people have range anxiety. They can't they're, go anywhere. They're scared them, right? that, yeah. yeah, I'm going to get somewhere, and it's going to take eight hours to charge. Wow. <laughs> eight hours. Yeah, wow. that's how long okay. those can take. So the wow. best part about this is that this is kind of a super hybrid. Okay. So it gets 100 miles per gallon. Whoa. Um, nice. It's got a full gas tank, Sorry, and then it also has a battery that's bigger than a normal hybrid battery. Hybrid. Okay, so all right. So tell us what we're looking at here. What do we have? Right it's now, like a game show. We are, it looks like a, a high-tech video game. Yeah. But we use this for training, for decision making, uh, for an officer to get in the vehicle. Uh, everything's going to be the same. Follow the rules of the road. We all know that. And then when it comes down to a situation where an officer has to step it up, 
you have to stop someone, for example, or even a pursuit, this will simulate a good pursuit, when to, uh, uh, what kind of decisions you're going to make uh, to continue a pursuit or to back off and terminate. Very nice. Mm -hmm. This okay. is the inside of a real police car here. That's what it they look does. Like. It looks and that's like great. the whole dashboard yeah. and okay. the controls. Yes. Yeah. All right. So how does this thing work? So, I mean, All right. What do we do? Fire it up. Uh, if you would yeah. go ahead and fire it up. Oh, here we uh, go. You're starting it just like a regular car. And this is uh, Gunther here. All right. See you. I, okay. hear, I hear the sounds. It's got sound effects, obviously. Right. I'm going to put it in drive there and then continue forward and go to the stop sign. Go to the stop sign. This is really cool. Whoa. See? Nice. Whoa, motion sickness. I've got this great app on my phone. It's a uh, Google Translate. Uh, it's easy to download. It's just a great app. But watch this. What I can do, this is a parking machine. It's really cool. Yeah, it's not uh, going anywhere. Exactly. It's stationary. <laughs> no, these folks that have parked right here, oh, okay. they can uh, pay for their parking right here. And I, I don't know what this says, so I can hold my phone up here. And I just like I'm taking a picture of the text and I have it translating Japanese into English. All right. And once it does that, I highlight the text I want to read and I can see that this says information. Whatever comes up here is the information that they need to park their car and how much to pay. We're doing some law enforcement training that we do across the state of Virginia and we're using our driver simulator. And that's what the little funny thing on the yeah. that young man is. You want to know how it works? Yeah, but what's all of this other stuff? What like we got here is we have a ramping system that puts you onto two turntables. Each wheel, front wheels, has a turntable associated with it oh. that is censored into the computer, and we run a driver scenario off of that. So this is a lot different from the one that we saw at uh, another police department where they actually had a sit-down system. This is a real police car. Right. This is a and mobile you're system. Actually, okay. So you can just take it anywhere and hook it up to any car. Yeah. Any car, and it's mobile. We, we have sensors actually attached to the accelerator pedal and to the gas. Really? And then each sensor is then hooked into the computer along with the turntables to give us a good reading on steering, acceleration, and braking. So okay. this gives you scenarios similar to what a police officer or an ambulance driver or EMS guy would go through. Uh, different levels, I imagine, right? Correct. What it does is it, uh, we start with a lower hazard run with very little situational awareness okay. to a very complicated hazard run with many situations. Here. Tell yeah. us a little bit about these uh, beautiful trucks and what do you do with them? Uh, we respond to any incident that happens. It could be an oil light come on in a private plane. Uh -huh. uh, we will respond to that and uh, or it could be a major incident such as uh, an engine could have problems like a Legion Airlines or something like that. And we respond, we take both trucks out, we got a command car we take out. Uh, uh, we get out there probably in less than 90 seconds. To really? Extent. Yeah. So we always on a high state of alert. Well, tell us a little bit. This, this caught my eye over here. This, this thing right here. Uh, excuse me, I'm getting out of the picture here. Uh, you don't see these every day somewhere. So what, what exactly is, is that? Uh, Patrick. Patrick, Patrick. Um, huh? All right. <laughs> this is a piercing tip. Um, what we use it for is the main thing we use it for is in like a cargo aircraft that's on fire. We can penetrate the side of that aircraft with that piercing tip. Um, we don't actually have to enter the plane to put water in it, and that's just a little safety mechanism for us so we don't have to enter those those planes in that situation.